So why did I return to school? Creativity doesn't wait for the perfect moment. It fashions itself out of perfect moments out of ordinary ones. Um, it's been a long road. I've explored drawing and ceramics. Uh, this is my bust of Einstein. This is myself. Uh, photography, commercial photography, landscape. Um, when we talk about creativity, not having a perfect moment, they're ordinary ones. I saw my creativity coming out of my uh, cooking and not only the cooking, but the photography of the cooking. Here I am in my room. And I think I was probably 16, 17. A little background. I grew up in Southern California, 1970s. It was an outdoor lifestyle, bikes and skateboards, boogie boarding at Zuma Beach, year round sports. And then just over the hill, canyons is the movie industry, the music industry, um, Disneyland. Out in the hills, there's JPL laboratories. There's a, there's a space movement. What are my, some of my early art influences were uh, my father's amateur photography, uh, which the landscape that he hung in the house, I believe in his office. My mother was an acrylic painter. Uh, also, during this period, uh, 60s, 70s, uh, a label, it was a California light and space movement. And it's a label for West Coast minimalist art. It was concerned with geometric shapes and the use of light uh, that can affect the environment. But the last line uh, tells me that I knew that it was affecting me because it argued that light and space art emerged in no small part because of Los Angeles radiant light and tempered atmosphere. I also worked at Licorice Pizza. So I started at 16, by 18, I was a shift manager. I also gravitated towards display making. So the record companies would send you flats or the covers of the album and posters to make displays that they purchased or bought. And here's one of my Genesis ones. And the go-go, the, the go-go's. I can already see that I'm repurposing materials. I can already start to see uh, repeated values. Um, I'm twisting these things and bending them and using tools to achieve, uh, to transform them in a way. In high school, I was diagnosed dyslexic. Um, you can, we all probably know what it is. Uh, it involves words, letters, symbols, and, and how, how language affects me. Um, 20% of the population can experience different person to person. My QM average GPA was 2.42. Uh, two years of academic probation. Uh, academics was not fun for me. It was tough. Uh, it instilled uh, a lack of self-confidence. Um, and I also got a B in photography in college. Um, here are the images that I presented. Uh, for a critique, and I still remember the teacher telling me, you will never be a real photographer until you start taking pictures of people. Um, it stayed with me, uh, it, but instead, if he had approached it with, wow, I see line work and repeating values and how you want to twist things, I, this road may have started a lot earlier. The camera has been a constant companion uh, along this ride with me, um, and but it wasn't until I brought my hand in front of the lens. In 2003, I began to explore textural photographs. I began to take pictures of stucco, close-ups, um, the sky, textural elements, uh, telephone poles with staples in them. Here is one of, uh, in 2017, I began in earnest to work on this abstract photography. I set up a little box in the basement. 2019, I took first place in an international photography contest for uh, creases, and it was abstract professional, and it actually hung in Barcelona in 2019 for two months. There it is in the wall. I was thrilled. It was awesome, but I knew something was missing because I couldn't explain what was happening. 
I knew it, I could see it, but I couldn't talk about it. I couldn't intellectualize it, um, but I knew I wanted to do more and I knew I kept coming back to it. I think that's one that recurring theme of my life. I've touched a lot of the disciplines, nothing, what keeps nourishing you to come back? I like surprise, I like wonderment um, and I require random unexpected action. I expect a dialogue between me and the materials. I don't feel it's a one-way experience. In light of that, Agnes Martin said, that which takes us by surprise, moments of happiness, that is the inspiration. That's what I find. Those things that I'm not expecting during the day. You saw it with my sculptures and how something would swing magically away. And you know, how did that happen? Um, that really helped me hone my core value. I also believe in limited materials. Um, the creative mind is a wild beast and sometimes it needs to, it needs blinders. Um, so by, by limiting my materials, it helps me focus because I think there's a creative mind. Sometimes we can think about all the possibilities and be overwhelmed. If you're only working with certain materials, you can hone that mind. You can bring it in and focus it. Still leaving room for surprise. Helen Frankenthaler. I didn't realize all that I was doing, I was trying to get at something. I don't know what it was until it was manifest. This is a core value of mine. Absolutely core value. Uh, I embrace a high rate of failure. So with sculpture, I felt like I couldn't miss. And if I did, there would be all this waste, right? Where do I store that? How do I think about that? This has a high rate of failure. These nine images took 500 shots to get here. Um, and I need that to tap into my imagination because sculpture at times, I was focused too much on engineering. I was dreaming about how nuts and bolts and, and lath and drills and what's my new tool that I'm gonna buy. When I'm creating this, I'm focused on the surprise and letting things just happen. This is uh, something I made when I was nine years old. It's a window into what's where my mind, how I saw things. And I try to get back to that moment when I'm working. So Matisse, we talk about the dream of purity, serenity, devoid of trouble or depressing subjects. I wanna set your mind at ease. I believe in meditation. I believe in happiness, solace, wonderment, reflection, meditation. I tried to make these a lo low barrier of entry that anyone, a child can see these and, and react to them naturally. I don't wanna tell you which way to go on that so that you can insert your own connections. That to me is the perfect body surfing wave. I want you to take your own experiences and insert them. A lot of people connected to reverb and refract and uh, propel. We've all, but we insert ourselves into these and that's what I enjoy the most. So where do I fit? I'm an abstract expressionist. Uh, paintings that express an artist's state of mind influenced by the collective of conscious, moving from abstraction of a recognizable item, like a landscape or a person to completely non-representational work. There are a lot of other movements that I've learned about and I connected with, but I'm gonna take, I'm gonna show you what I take away from it, right? Not the whole movement, so color field, large scale canvas is dominated by a flat expanse of color and having minimal surface detail. Same thing here, except I'm flipping the word minimum to maximum. I'm distressing and alter, uh, changing the direction of how the light flows. So I call it hyper color field. I'm a symbolist. I believe that art should reflect an emotion or an idea rather than represent the natural world. I'm a pictorialist. Uh, I want to reinvent it as an art form, uh, beauty, tonality, and composition above an accurate vis visual record. I'm a futurist. I love speed, implied movement, energy, and modern life. I'm an analytical cubist, uh, characterized by fragmentary appearance of multiple viewpoints and overlapping planes. I work in collage and assemblage. Uh, I work with found objects in a broad range of unusual materials, alternating the original meaning or the purpose of the materials. Uh, Frida Kahlo, I do not know if my paintings are surrealist or not, I, but I do know that they are the most frank expression of who I am, of myself. That's what you see on the wall today. 
as I explained, everything that I've just talked about points to this quote. Um, and you know, it, it, uh, it's when I named this show, it was based on the materials and what they did and the things that I selected. Really, it's about me, right? It's reflections, it's refractions, and it's transparency, it's who I am. Uh, and it's, uh, it's taken a long time, but I think Miles Davis said it best. Sometimes it can take a long time to learn how to play like yourself. I'm close. Thank you. <laughs>